Blessings upon blessings and welcome. I welcome you here today at Promises Cup Ministry. I'm Sister Deborah. I will be bringing forth the word today. I greet you in the Lord. I send you hugs and kisses to each and every one of you. I pray that this word speak life into you today, that you receive it with an open heart, that your ears be receptive, and that your mind be transformed today. We're going to start off in Genesis chapter 22, starting at verse 1. And the word of the Lord reads, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son. The title of today's message is Faith Like Isaac. Now you may be saying to yourself, what do you mean faith like Isaac. Abraham is the father of faith. But I'm going to show you how it is that Isaac had to have faith in order to be bound, placed on an altar, and ready to be sacrificed. We know for a fact that Isaac was a promised child. God promised him to Abraham and Sarah long before he was even conceived. And I believe, and from doing my research, that Isaac was of age. He wasn't a boy. Some people say he was in his teens. Others say he was in his 30s. 
regardless of what age he was. Isaac had had to have faith in order to allow his father to tie him up and place him on an altar and be willing to be sacrificed. He, the Bible doesn't say that he was asleep. It doesn't say that he was in a daze. No, he was up and about and aware of his surroundings. Yet Isaac, knowing all these promises that God has placed over his life and the life of his father, was willing to be sacrificed. And that, my friend, takes faith. I call it blind faith. I call it unseen faith. Let us continue. Genesis 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my state is Eliza from Damascus? And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household would be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. Verse six, Abram believed the Lord and it credited to him as righteousness. So here we go. Here is the promise of Isaac in Abraham's life. Now, why would God tell Abraham about a promised child, about all the descendants he would have, about all the great things he would do, and yet tell him, here, I want you to sacrifice him. Let us continue. Chapter 16, starting at verse 1. Now Sahari, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slaves, my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what his wife said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sahari, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. I believe this happened because she overheard the conversations that they had. I'm sure by now everyone knew about the promise that God had made to Abraham. Abram was his name before the Lord gave him a new name. And this is why the, the slave, the maid, the concubine despised her mistress because she had her do something that she knew wasn't supposed to come out of her. It was promised to Abraham and Sarah and Abraham and Sarah alone. Genesis 18, starting at verse nine. The word reads, where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening in the entrance of the tent, which was 
behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of child's bearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I know, will I now have this pleasure? Genesis 21. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, the Lord did to Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham. Hold on, let me move myself. Verse two, Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his, in his old age at the very time God had promised. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, God had brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh at me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet here I am. Yet here I have borne him a son in his old age. You may be asking yourself, why, Deborah, are you reading this if you already went forward and spoke about the sacrifice that Abraham did with Isaac? I am telling you this and rereading these things because in order for us to believe God's promises over our lives. We have to go back to when he first said it and continue to believe in it. I showed you that Sarah laughed when the Lord said, this time next year, you will have a child. I showed you how she didn't believe him, so she gave him over to her slave to bear children. And she even said, maybe through her, I will have a family. Because her faith was dim. Her faith wasn't where it was supposed to be. She looked at her age she looked that she had been with Abraham for so long that it was impossible in her eyes. And even at the time, Abraham went along with it. He said, okay, let me do it and start it through this person since you have not yet bore my son. This was their mentality, even after God had already spoken the promises, the promise, the one promise to have a child over their life. And Hagar's son is called Ishmael. And Ishmael is always known as the, not mistake, because God blessed him and he became something great, but he was an Isaac. He was what we will call now in days, the mistake or the, I'm looking for a word and I can't find it. Um, the false promise. He is what we do when we try to make the promises that God has told us we're going to come over our lives when we try to do it on our own. That's what Sarah and Abraham did at that time. And that was the, 
not consequence, but that's what came out of it. If you continue reading in the chapters and in the verses, you read how God told Sarah, told Hagar to leave because she couldn't stand looking at her and her son, even though this was Abraham's child. God told Abraham, let them go. Hagar was ready to let the child die because she left and she had nothing. But that's when God told her, that's not what's going to happen to your son. Your son is not going to die. Showed her where there was water for him to drink. And bless Ishmael. But God doesn't want us to have Ishmael's in our lives. He wants the promises that he spoke over our lives to come to pass. And he wants us to believe in them once and for all. Not to go on our own route, not to go on our own path, trying to make it happen. He wants us to have faith and have faith and have faith that it is going to pass regardless if it happens in a day, in a month, in a year, in years to pass like Abraham and Sarah. He didn't do it overnight. He did it on his timing when it was the right place, day and time for it to happen. That's why he wants us to have faith in that if he sp speaks to it to us today and it happens 10 years from now, we hold on to that promise day after day after day until we see it happen in our lives. And not only in our lives, but in the lives of our children as well. Let us continue. John 3, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world. Now you may be asking yourself, why are you reading this? famous scripture because God had had to have faith in his son that he will be able through faith have the patience and time to walk through what he went through and be crucified on the cross, that takes faith. And just like Isaac had to have faith to be able to be bound and sacrificed, Jesus had to walk the walk that he did in faith in order to be able to be crucified on the cross. And I'm going to show you how Jesus was able to do it, just like Isaac. John 19, starting at 16. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called Place of the Skulls. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side with Jesus Christ between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was sacrificed was near the city. And the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek so that many people could read it. Luke 22, look what Jesus prays to his father. 
Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Sorry, guys, I was supposed to read Luke 22 first. But we see here that even Jesus asked God here to take the cup from him, just like Isaac told his father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Yet God, Jesus says, I want your will to be done, not my own. And then in John 19, we see how he was willing to be sacrificed. One for all, so that we may have eternal life. And with that eternal life brings faith. Now look what the Bible says about faith. Mark 11, starting at verse 22 reads, then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth that you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your mind, in your heart, sorry. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe you received it, it will be yours. This is what God tells us. To have faith to move mountains. Have faith that can move mountains. Have faith that can heal diseases. Have faith that can bring your finances into your home. Have faith that can give you a new home. Have faith that you have the car. Have faith that you have the wisdom to complete the will of God over your life. This is what it tells us to have faith that can move mountains. That's the kind of faith that Isaac had. That's the kind of faith that Jesus had. And that's the kind of faith that God wants you and I to have. Romans 10, starting at verse 6. And the word reads, But faith's way of getting right with God says, Do not say in your heart, Who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down? Oh, let me move myself again. And do not say, Who will go down to the place of the dead? to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. That message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. So again, we read that it is in our hearts and also in our lips that faith is birthed. We have to believe in our hearts and we have to make the confession with our lips. This is the way that we, how do I say it? This is the way that we place doubt and fear and anxiety under our feet when it comes to our belief. By declaring it, if God said it, it will come to pass. It will happen on his time, but we got to keep on saying it. We got to keep on believing it in our hearts. 
because that's where belief is birth. It is in our hearts, like the scriptures say. Matthew 17, it reads, you do not have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing will be impossible. Faith, even as small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed is extremely small, like a little dot in your hand. And the word tells us that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, it will happen. The mountain will move. Nothing will be impossible for you or I. So what is it today that you need faith as small as a mustard seed? What is it that you need to have truth in? What is it that you need to move mountains? Matthew 7, it reads, let me move myself. Okay. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will open to you. For everyone who acts receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. You parents, if your ch children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? It says here, keep on asking, keep on knocking, keep on seeking. I know many times that I've prayed for something, maybe once or twice. Occasionally, when I remember, I pray for it. And those things have not come to pass in my life. And I'm reminded of this verse over and over and over again. It says here to keep on. It doesn't say Acts 1, ask twice. No, it says to keep on asking, to keep on seeking. That means you keep on praying it. You keep on seeking it from the Lord. You keep on knocking at that door. Lord, this is what I'm asking for. Lord, this is what I'm seeking. Lord, this is what I need. It says to keep on. I'm going to show you three people who had blind faith, like Isaac and our Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh. Wow, I made myself big there. Okay, this is just another example, Luke 17, 5 and 6. The apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord said, if you have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this marble tree, may you be uprooted and be planted into the sea and it will obey you. This is just another example of the mustard seed, guys. Okay, Matthew 8, starting at verse 5. When Jesus had entered, a certain tree came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lays at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The certain tree replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word 
and my servants will be healed. For I myself am, am a man of authority with soldiers under me. I tell one go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such faith, with such great faith. What amazes me here is that he tells the Lord that he is a man under authority. So he already knew that Jesus Christ had the authority to just speak the words and it will happen. If you continue reading in scriptures, you'll see that his servant was healed once Jesus said that truly I have never found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That's when his servant was healed. And here we see that he says it. Lord, I tell one go and he goes. I tell one comes and he comes. That's how God knew this man has faith. Because he knew that just by saying the words, it will be done. Mark 5, starting at verse 30. Look what the word says. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing that she had had, okay, let me start over verse 33. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. This is a story about a woman with an issue of blood who heard the stories of what Jesus was doing and said to herself, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And we see that she did it and it happened. What I love about this story is that Jesus realized, it says here, he knew someone had touched his clothes. And he kept looking around to see who it was. He wanted to acknowledge her faith because he knew that the power of healing had come out of him. And this is what God wants us to have in our life. This type of faith, this blind faith, that we know that we know that we know it is going to come to pass. If you need healing, keep on asking, keep on seeking. If you need deliverance from something, keep on asking, keep on seeking. If you need your finances set in place, keep on asking. Keep on seeking. These are just a few stories that it happened instantly. So we know that our faith can bring it forth instantly, that nothing is impossible for the God that we serve. Let us go to one final story. And the word reads, a Canadian, a Canadian woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus didn't answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away 
for she keeps on crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, your faith has made your, you, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at the moment Her daughter was healed at the moment. God, Jesus Christ, recognized her faith. At this time, Jesus was sent for the Jews. He wasn't ready for the Gentiles. Not yet. And yet here she was, going, acknowledging who he was. Lord, son of David. Lord, son of David. And she was persistent because it says that she kept on asking and the disciples asked Jesus to send her away. But she wouldn't. Lord, help me, she said. And he replies, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss them to the dogs. Verse 27 is powerful because she says, yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. That means she was willing to take whatever he was willing to give her. She didn't care. She's like, yes, Lord. But I wanted to. I wanted to, and it says that her daughter was healed from being demon possessed. One last scripture guys, and I'm gonna repeat it again. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. For everyone who acts receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Just right there, guys. Those, those two verses right there. So I ask you today, what is it that you need blind faith for? Faith like Isaac. Faith like Jesus Christ. Faith like all the stories I read to you. What do you need blind faith in? What is it? My prayer for you today is that You forget what you've been praying for. Yes, I said it. Forget what you've been praying for. Start new. Write it down. Speak it with your mouth. Ask God what his promises are over your life, over the life of your children over the world that he has called you to? What are the promises? What are those prayers that you've had before that you need to rekindle? That you need to bring them back up in prayer? What are those things that you've been seeking and you haven't received yet? Because it says here to keep on, keep on asking.
So today, keep on. Don't look for tomorrow. Keep on until you see it come to pass in your life. Keep on. Don't let it go. Don't put it in the back of your notebooks. Don't let it leave your lips. Put it front and center. Look at it every day. Recite it every day. Confess it with your mouth every day until you see it come to pass. Don't let it be something you prayed for. Let it be something you prayed for and it came to pass. Don't let it be something that you bury. Don't let it have a measure. Don't give God a time limit. He knows what you need. He knows what you are asking for. He knows the promises he made over your life before you did. He knows. So today, let go of what you think you know of. Isaac knew he was about to be sacrificed. And yet God stopped it right when his father had the knife over his body and provided the lamb for the sacrifice. See, God provides just in time. So today, I just want you to let go of what you think you know and take Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8 and put it in your heart and confess it with your lips that you are going to continue asking. You are going to continue seeking. You are going to keep on like the word says like the woman with the issue of blood if I just touch his hand like the Canaanite woman with her daughter yes Lord but even the dogs eat the crumbs of their masters they knew what Jesus was able to do and they reminded him of it. And when we do that, when we have faith like that, when we have the blind faith that Jesus Christ wants us to have, anything is possible for us. So bring down every wall. Take out every thought you may have. Revite what you're asking for. Revisit what it is that you're seeking. And let it all come into play on God's timing. All you need is to have faith as small as a mustard seed. And it is so. It will happen for you and I. So Lord, right now, I just pray for each and every individual listening in today, Lord God. I declare an increase of faith over their lives, Lord God. I declare that you are breaking every barrier they have built, Lord God. You are taking yourself out of the 
box today, Lord. You are releasing your power over their lives, Father Lord Jesus, to complete the promises over their lives today. Whether it happens today, tomorrow, or years from now, Lord God, we will continue to have faith as small as a mustard seed placed in our hearts. We will continue to keep on asking. We will continue to keep on seeking until we receive what it is, Lord God, that you have for us in our lives, Lord Jesus. I declare, Father Lord God, that you renew their minds today, Father Lord Jesus. And what they thought they knew, Father Lord God, you will replace it with your truth and your love for them over their lives, Lord God. For you are our provider and we lack no good thing from your hands, Lord Jesus. We declare the possible in our lives today, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Do you receive these words into your life today? Do you believe in blind faith for your life today? I pray that you do. And I cannot wait to hear what God is doing in your life. Now, if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or you would like to recommit your life to Jesus Christ today, repeat these words with me. Lord God, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord over me. I receive your sacrifice in my life and that your sacrifice has set me free and made me anew. It's in Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. Now, I love you guys. Bless you guys always. And until next time, God bless.